This is video two of the cross product, and in this video, we'll talk about finding area and volume using the cross product. If theta is the angle between vectors u and v, then the magnitude of u cross v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times sine theta. Notice that this is the length of u cross v. The length of u cross v equals the area of the parallelogram determined by u and v. So if we have a parallelogram determined by u and v, and theta is the angle between u and v, then we can create a right triangle to figure out the height of the parallelogram. So we drop down a line from the end of V onto U, and it's creating a right angle there. And um, then the height, the leg that's going straight up and down, is going to be the magnitude of V times the absolute value of sine theta. Because H is the opposite side from theta, and V is the hypotenuse. So we know that the area equals base times height, the base is the magnitude of u, and the height is the magnitude of v times absolute value of sine theta, and this is equivalent to the magnitude of u cross v. So the area of a parallelogram determined by u and v can be found by taking the magnitude of the cross product. In example two, we're asked to find the area of the triangle determined by the points P, Q, and R, and then find a unit vector perpendicular to the plane P, Q, R. Now notice that they say triangle, and a triangle is half of a parallelogram. So we have to keep this in mind as we work through the problem. Now we have point P is one, negative one, one, Q is 0, 1, 1, and R is 1, 0, negative 1. We know from the last slide that the area of the parallelogram determined by these would be the magnitude of U cross V. So the area of the triangle is going to be the magnitude of U cross V divided by 2 since the triangle is half of the parallelogram. First, we need to identify u and v vectors, and we can pick any base point from our three, p, q, or r. I'm going to use p as my base point or starting point for each vector. So u is equal to vector p, q, and v is equal to vector p, r. And remember, to determine a vector, we do the ending point minus the starting point. So PQ is equal to 0 minus 1I plus 1 minus negative 1J plus 1 minus 1K. So basically Q minus P. This gives us the vector negative 1I plus 2J plus 0K. So that's what we'll use for vector U. V is vector PR, so we're going to do R minus P. So we have 1 minus 1i plus 0 minus negative 1j plus negative 1 minus 1k. And this simplifies to 0i plus 1j minus 2k. So now, second step, we want to find u cross v. So we set up our determinant i, j, k, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 2. So that's u in the second row and v in the third row. And we expand along the top row. So we have alternating signs, plus, minus, plus. Start with i, so we get i, eliminate the row and column that i is in, and we have i times the determinant of 2, 0, 1, negative 2. Now we have alternating signs, so then we do minus j, eliminate the row and column that j is in, 
So we have j times the determinant of negative 1, 0, 0, negative 2. And then plus k, eliminate the row and column that k is in. So we have k times the determinant of negative 1, 2, 0, 1. All right, so we'll continue this on the next slide. U cross V is I times the determinant of 2, 0, 1, negative 2 minus J times the determinant of negative 1, 0, 0, negative 2 plus K times the determinant of negative 1, 2, 0, 1. So remember we do forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal. So this is equal to I times negative 4 minus 0 minus J times 2 minus 0 plus k times negative 1 minus 0. And this simplifies to negative 4i minus 2j minus 1k. So there's my u cross v. Now we know that the area of the parallelogram is the magnitude of u cross v. So this is the square root of negative 4 squared plus negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared which gives me the square root of 21. And then the last step, the area of the triangle is half of this, so the area of the triangle is square root of 21 over 2. Now the second part of the problem asked us to find a unit vector perpendicular to the plane PQR. Note that u cross v is perpendicular to both u and v, and so a unit vector perpendicular to the plane PQR is u cross v over the magnitude of u cross v. u cross v is perpendicular because it is 90 degrees to both u and v, which create the plane, and dividing by the magnitude makes it a unit vector. So we have negative 4 over square root of 21i minus 2 over square root of 21j minus 1 over square root of 21k. So that's how a cross product relates to um, the area of a parallelogram and also how it relates to finding a perpendicular vector to a plane. Now we're going to talk about volume and how the cross product relates to volume. The triple scalar product or box product is the vector u cross v dotted with w and it can be used to determine the volume of a parallelopiped, which is basically a slanted box. So if we have u cross v determining the, bare, the base of the parallelopiped, then we know that the area of the base is the magnitude of u cross v. Now we have a third vector w that determines a slanted edge of the box, so that's what makes it three-dimensional. And if theta is the angle between W and U cross V, then the height of the box is going to be the magnitude of W times absolute value of cosine theta. So that's just right triangle trigonometry again, giving us the height of the box. Now the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height, and we know that the area of the base is the magnitude of u cross v, and the height is the magnitude of w times the absolute value of cosine theta. But note, this is how we, um, how we determine the box product. So we have the magnitude, or actually in this case it would be the absolute value since a dot product is a scalar, so the absolute value of vector u cross v dotted with w. So that triple scalar product, if you take its absolute value, it will always give you the volume of 
a box or a parallelopiped. As a determinant, the triple scalar product can be defined as vector u cross v dotted with w equals the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix where you have u as the first row, v as the second row, and w as the third row. So example 3 says find the volume of the parallelopiped, or box, determined by u equals i plus 2j, v equals negative 3j plus 2k, and w equals 3i minus 4j plus 5k. So the volume is going to be the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix with u, v, and w as the rows. So u is 1, 2, 0. V is 0, negative 3, 2, and W is 3, negative 4, 5. So there's my rows of my matrix. And I'm going to take the determinant expanding along the top row. Remember, signs alternate, plus, minus, plus. I'm going to start out with the 1. That leaves me with the 2 by 2 matrix, negative 3, 2, negative 4, 5 minus 2 times the determinant of 0, 2, 3, 5, plus 0 times the determinant of 0, negative 3, 3, negative 4. Remember, I get these 2 by 2 matrices by eliminating the row and column that the coefficient is in. So that's going to be 1 times negative 15 minus negative 8 minus 2 times the quantity 0 minus 6 plus 0 times the quantity 0 minus negative 9. Put it all together and I get 5 and I'm finding a volume so that's 5 cubic units and remember we defined the volume to be the absolute value of that box product and so always take the absolute value when finding volume. Okay, so just to review, we found out that the magnitude of u cross v is the area of the parallelogram determined by u and v, that u cross v over the magnitude of u cross v is always a, a unit vector perpendicular to the plane determined by u and v, and that the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix with u, v, and w as the rows is the um, volume of the box determined by the three vectors. So let's just think a little deeper about it. How can you use the triple scalar product to determine when three given vectors lie in a plane? In other words, they're coplanar. So let's think about it. If, if they're in the same plane, that means that the height of the parallelopiped is zero. Now if the height is zero, what's the volume? So if the height is zero, the volume of the parallelopiped is zero. And we know that the volume is the absolute value of the triple scalar product. So if the volume is zero, then the triple scalar product must be zero. And so you can determine if um, two vectors, or I'm sorry, if three vectors are coplanar, if their triple scalar product is zero.